Hey guys, it's Doug Giles again and welcome back to Creative Restorations. Um, the other day I had somebody commented on one of my videos and asked me how do I determine uh, when to replace the rubber on a pool table. Well, just so happens I have a pool table here. Let's swing you around. We'll show you what I'm working on here. All right. This is a Brunswick Century Supreme, and as you can see, it's a double set of, it's a double rail for the side rails. Um, and quite frankly, the rubber is hard as a rock, okay? Uh, it's hard. The way you tell is you go, when the table is assembled, what you would do is you'd go around and you would actually take your thumb and press it into the rubber. Go all the way around and press into the rubber. If it springs back, let's bring you back around over here. All right, we'll go down a little bit. All right, this is brand new rubber. When you push into it, it springs right back. Okay, see how it does that? When it's old rubber, it does not spring back, okay? I've already done two of these rails. I've already stripped off two of these rails, but when you, when this old rubber, it does not spring back. As a matter of fact, it gets so hard, it actually breaks. And can you see right there? Can you see the uh, cracks in it? This is typically what happens when you've got old rubber. So, I didn't get a chance, I didn't actually show you guys on the, on the, how to replace a rubber video. Um, I didn't actually show you guys how to strip the, uh, the rails down and get all the old rubber off. So I'm going to show you that on this one. So let's bring you back around over here. And forgive the tight, the, the wide shot on here. Now, just so you guys can see, I, uh, I found this amusing. The other day, I had somebody commented, I think it was yesterday morning, somebody who fancies themselves a pool table mechanic commented about the staples that I use. Oh, you know, you're doing crap work. Oh, the staples that you use, you're using the wrong staples. That's how I know you're so bad at what you do. No! You're a disgrace to the pool table industry. Well, nothing could be further from the truth, okay? Uh, I don't know whether these were recovered at the uh, factory or covered at the factory. Uh, I have a strong suspicion that, uh, that they may have been. All right, so let me flip my uh, flip my screen around so I can see what I'm doing here. If you're gonna sit there and complain about the way that I do pool tables and the way I replace rubber and everything, you're more than welcome to do your own YouTube video and show people where I'm wrong, okay? Now, I use a grinder. Oops, don't wanna hit the mic. I use a grinder to clean up the uh, the sides of my uh, you know the ends of my rubber it works well okay it doesn't dig in it doesn't leave anything all hacked up as a matter of fact it leaves it about as clean as a as a cut with a knife actually it leaves it a thousand times cleaner nice and smooth a thousand times smoother than if you were to try to do this with a knife so you know like I said if if you want to complain about the way that I do it, you're more than welcome to do your own YouTube channel and show people where I'm wrong. All right. Now, just so you can see, the staples that the last guy used on here, get the focus. Yeah, let's pull back a little bit. There we go. These are household staples, okay? The staple gun I use is 
an upholstery stapler. It is meant for upholstery work. It is a 3 8 crown. I believe it is a 22 gauge. You know, and this guy commented, he says, oh, you know, you're using the wrong staples on there. That's how I know you're doing crap work. You're supposed to be using a half inch crown. 18 gauge staple on there. Dude, this is upholstery work and I've said it before. We're not building the Titanic here. All we have to do is hold this cloth in place. So we go in, we take a scratch all, and all we're doing is just plucking these staples. And the last guy, apparently he had a brand new staple gun and decided he was going to give it a real good thorough workout right here on the ends. Because there's a gajillion staples in here. And he only put one, one tack on the side. Put two tacks on the other side though. And after we've got that, we come in with a pair of wire cutters. We'll go in and we'll just take out all the staples. Now, forgive me. This is a little bit tedious. It's boring to sit here and watch me pull staples out of a rail. But it will get more interesting in just a minute. I have, by the way, for any of you guys interested, for any of you guys that signed up, I'm sorry, that subscribed because of my pool table videos, I have several videos that are already shot and I have to go in and edit them and upload them. So if you're here for the pool table videos, we got a bunch of stuff on the way. Everything from this project, replacing the rubber on here, well how to determine this. I have an upcoming series on the tools that I use, starting off with levels, and that's going to be actually a two-fold video. I'm going to show you the levels that I use, and it's going to be a video showing you how to go about leveling your pool table. Step by step. Now, this is not for coin-operated tables, although I may briefly touch on that. I may briefly talk about how to level a coin-operated pool table. Because leveling a regular coin-operated pool table is nowhere near as complex as a three-piece slate table. Okay, so we've got the, all the staples off. Our cloth is, uh, is loose from the bottom. We're going to flip this over. Move these rubbers back a little bit, give ourselves a little bit more room. And then from one end, we're going to pull the cloth out. And then slightly, with my pinky, I'm going to slightly lift up on the feather strip. And pull the cloth at the same time, and it usually comes out in one piece. Now, my next step is always come back and I like to get rid of all the dust. I like to work clean, even though I'm about to generate more. All right, next step, since we're replacing the rubber, next step is going to be pull these uh, rail facings off. Brunswick actually goes in and puts two staples in here to hold these in place. Now, same guy same guy complained about the rail facings that I use. All right, are there better rail facings out there? Yes, there are. Is there better cloth out there? Yes, there is. Is there better rubber out there than what I use? Yes, there is. But that's not what my customer pays for, okay? I'm not charging thousands and thousands of dollars 
to replace rubber. I could put Artemis rubber on here and I could do a very good job of it, but that's not what my customer wants. My, my customer doesn't want to spend that kind of money. 99% of all of my customers are homeowners. They're not professional pool players. Now, the rail facings I use, they are unbacked, okay? There's no backing. There's no fiber backing on it. Why do you need a fiber backing? Say it's supposed to make it more stable, does it? Are, they, are these less expensive than these? Yes. How much less expensive? These are about $3 a pack. To buy a pack of these are about $4 a pack. Do you really think I'm doing this as a cost saving measure? No, I'm not doing it as a cost saving me savings measure. I do it because, well, my customers will, be will, will get just as good a service out of these as what they will these. If it was a professional pool player or a five, six, or a seven in, uh, in APA, if that's who my customer was, well, I'd probably be putting these on there. I'd give them a better choice. You know, I would, uh, I would put what they ask me to put on there. I'm also going to go over all of their different options. All right, next step. Next step is going to be to remove the rubber on here. However, you don't want to just go in here, there's a, there's a hole right here, well, next step we're going to take off these, uh, take out these staples that we're holding the rail facings on, and they just pull out their staples like that, pull out the other side, okay, now, like I said, before you just go in here, and there's a hole right here in between the rubber and the wood. See it? It's right. My hands will stop shaking. There's a hole right there. Okay? That actually fits inside of there. But before you just jam something in there and start ripping this off, the one thing that you want to do is look at the grain structure on here. Okay? And whatever your predominant grain structure is, that's the direction. Actually, I'm going to pull the camera off, off here again. And I'm not going to get this thing to stand up straight. Let's pull the camera off and we'll bring you around over here and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. If you look right in here, you'll see that this grain goes upwards, goes upwards away a little bit. The grain right here goes in towards the rubber. So if we pull the rubber off from left to right, we're going to be peeling up this edge of the wood. So wood, wood grain changes. It can change from rail to rail. It can change within one rail. So if we've got grain that runs this way on an angle, on the other end, we've got it running pretty much straight, but it feathers out this way. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, on this end, we're gonna pull from right to left. And then when we get to about right here, before we get into this opposite grain, we'll switch in to this end, and we're gonna pull from left to right, and we'll meet them both up in the center. If you don't do that, you stand a really, oh, let's turn the camera around. If you don't do that, you stand a really good chance of ripping out a whole bunch of wood. Okay? So, let's move this out of the way. We'll start from this end. We're going to try our best to get the rubber and backing off all in one piece so that all we're left with on the rail is just a little residual glue. And you press your scratch all. I'm using a large scratch all. You can use a number three Phillips screwdriver with a nice thick shank on it. 
work our scratch all in that, that hole that's in the rubber and just kind of bend up a little bit. And then when we get to a point, we'll just come back behind and gently start lifting and pulling the rubber away. Now, like I said, before the wood grain changes, we're going to stop and we're going to come from the other direction. And you're listening for a couple of things. If you start hearing the sound of cracking wood, stop. Sometimes it's unavoidable and you have to go back in and fill. In which case, you know, you've done everything that you can, but this rubber has to come off. up and we're going to go by hand now. Grab it underneath with your hand. I like to put my elbow on here and use that as a fulcrum. There we go. Now we got that whole rubber off without damaging the wood. Okay and again this is how bad off this rubber is. We go to bend it and it just snaps in half. If we tried to do that with brand new rubber, that doesn't happen. All right, here, I'll tip the camera up. Forgive me, I'm a little out of breath because that's, uh, number one, I'm getting over COVID still. And it has left me a little short of breath, but that's all right. I'm back in work, and the more I work, the better off I'll feel. And uh, the more my uh, my my, my uh, oxygen intake will will increase. So, but anyway, uh, that's how you get the rubber off. That's how you determine whether or not the uh, the rails are bad. You feel them by you know by touch. The other thing that rubber will do is it'll turn soft. So, I mean, really soft. Like this is soft in it, but it's springy. Um, the other thing that it'll do is it'll turn soft, but when you go to mash in, it just stays. So the inside of this old rubber, well, this is still, that old rubber is, is still halfway okay on the inside, but the exterior is completely dry rotted. Um, some other rubbers out there will, the, the, when they start to dry rot, instead of turning hard, they, they will turn hard, but they'll also turn like to mush on the inside. So when you press in, it leaves an indentation. That's no good either, all right? Um, to my critics, like I said, you're more than welcome to go out there and go start your own YouTube channel. Um, you know, there's a lot of people hating on me because of the information that I'm giving you guys for free. And, you know, it kind of, the information that I'm giving you guys threatens the livelihoods of a lot of pool table mechanics out there, or at least they perceive it to. It doesn't. The portion, I've said this before, the portion of you guys that would go out and go do this on your own, go do this anyway, y'all exist. And it doesn't matter whether I tell you how to do it or I don't tell you how to do it, you're going to attempt it anyway and you're not going to go out there and go spend money and have somebody do it for you, okay? So it really doesn't matter if I tell you guys how to do this. 
that portion of you guys exists. And you know what? That's fine. I would rather you do this, do this stuff and do it right and do it safely than to go out there and get yourself hurt. But again, like I digress, uh, like I said, a lot of pool table mechanics uh, find what I'm doing to be an affront to their income. And I, I get it, and I used to think that way, but I don't think that way anymore. Um, because the vast majority of the people out there, and I think, and I think it's actually going to be the exact same number of people, exact same percentage of people, are going to continue to have professionals do a professional job. Number one, you know, it's not terribly expensive. And number two, you know, we can knock it out in, in a tenth of the time that it would take somebody, you know, a, uh, an amateur to do the same job. So, you know, I don't worry about these guys. But uh, anyway, uh, going back to, the, to what I was saying before, you know, the information that I'm, I'm giving, these guys find it in a front. Um, and I want to continue giving you guys this information. I want to continue doing these videos. So what I've done is I've opened up a, uh, I've, I've, uh, eh, open, I guess. I, I don't know all the technical terms, but anyway, I have a Patreon account now. So if, uh, if you find the information that I'm giving you and you find these videos to be useful and you've managed to save money by doing this job yourself, as opposed to paying somebody else, hey, look. I would appreciate it if you were to go on and become a, a, a patron of this channel so that I can continue to put out videos like this. You know, these videos do take time to make and produce and everything like that, and uh, I want to continue bringing them to you. And the little bit of money that I make off of YouTube, and I mean little bit of money that I make off of YouTube from these, is nowhere near uh, what the information is worth. So. Uh, if you find value in this, I would strongly encourage you to go over to my Patreon account. I'll leave the link below and uh, become a patron of this channel and, you know, help me to continue to make these, make these videos possible. Um, what I will start doing is that if you're a Patreon uh, subscriber, I will go ahead and upload the videos and the subscribers will get first views. Um, you know, the, whoever's a subscriber, you'll get you'll get the opportunity to watch the videos at least a, a day or two, if not more, ahead of everybody else. So, um, anyway, like I said, we'll uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Next video is going to be uh, how to level a pool table, and I'll talk about the levels that I use. So, see you on see you then. Y'all take care. Bye.